and that tornado warning still in effect there for Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties until 8.30 p.m. Again, we're looking at radar indicated rotation with that system. Uh, we'll check out uh, velocity here, and again, we are still uh, not seeing a super, super tight couplet, but anywhere that we're seeing those reds and those greens still uh, something that we do want to check out, and you're seeing some of those really, really bright, uh, almost white colored greens there. Uh, that's where we're looking at those higher velocities, certainly possible. So again, right now it's skirting just to the south of the Cascade area, it would appear, but still, if you're in the Cascade area, want to make sure that uh, you are getting to your safe place. Uh, if you're not already there, if you are there, please stay there. That is certainly where you want to be uh, at this time. I'm going to pull up the severe thunderstorm watch here real quick. It looks like we've um, uh, just had a few counties actually taken out of that. So uh, that is certainly some good news. Obviously, there to the north and to the west, that's where those storms have already pushed through the area. So looking like we are, uh, we have been able to take out a couple counties from that. Uh, but again, continuing for many of our counties still uh, until that 11 o'clock hour there to the south and still parts of our northeastern zone through that 9 o'clock hour. So we still have that threat for severe weather around through the evening hours. At least the next uh, two hours, maybe three hours, we'll still be seeing these storms pushing through eastern Iowa. Here's a wider look uh, at all the activity that we have right now still firing up along that cold front. Yeah, and we did have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings expire too. Um, the severe thunderstorm warning that was for portions of Delaware, Dubuque, and Jones and Lynn County was set to expire, as well as a severe thunderstorm warning that was in portions of Blackhawk and Tama County. So these are our current ones that we have on your screen right now. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warnings, as well as that single tornado warning, reason why we are in our continuous coverage right now. I will say if you're in Bremer, Butler, Grundy, Tama, um, as well as Marshall counties, not Tama, excuse me, Marshall County, they, those have been expired from this, which means your severe weather threat is over for the night. But again, Blackhawk County still up to the north and down to the south and east, and especially we've still got a couple more hours left of this system to go. So we've got a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings here to our north. This one that's pushing through. Please just, switch over to Max 2 for that. Yeah, Max 2, please. Thank you. Uh, just passed through the Independence area, pushing through Brandon as well as the Vinton area. That continues to push to the south and east. And I do want to put a track on this as it continues to move closer and closer to some more communities across eastern Iowa. So most likely will be impacted. Van Horn as well as Bell Plain very, very soon. Center point by around 811. Bell Plain by 817. Van Horn just before 830. Central City by 836. Marengo by 851. Monticello by 904. And again, we are going to continue to track all of these severe thunderstorms with you throughout the rest of this evening. These ones here could have the potential of those high winds as well as the potential for hail. So keep that in mind as well. Whether or not you are under a severe thunderstorm warning or a tornado warning. We want you to get to your safe place as quick as possible because high winds can do just as much damage with that. I do want to pull up our Vinton City Cam just to see if we can see anything from this system necessarily as it is approaching that area very, very quickly. Um, and you can see those dark clouds rolling through. This is a great image here of kind of seeing what exactly is moving into the Vinton area at this point. You can see kind of on the edge of the lower end of that cloud, a little bit of lowering there, but no rotation within the storm at this point just seeing the potential of some high winds as well as the potential of hail as the at this point as well and it does look like we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning just to our west um that the, one to the south it looks south. like yep. sorry excuse me yep. so far far south uh, east iowa uh, headed towards the burlington area actually but does include parts of des moines henry lee and van buren counties and that one also again has that tornado possible tag on it uh, as we are seeing some radar indicated rotation we'll take a look at that here you can see again those very very bright greens with that system uh, down here so that's why we have that tornado possible tag some very high winds uh, with that storm as it rolls through the area, but again, uh, that is far southeast Iowa. Most of the TV9 viewing area to this um, south of I-80, not actually seeing those stronger storms here at this time.
Um, and to the north of I-80, we continue to see quite a few warnings actually uh, in place. We have Jasper, Powashik, and Tama counties. That warning in effect until 9 p.m. for 60 mile power winds and nickel-sized hail. Uh, we also have that tornado warning for Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties for uh, um, another 25 minutes here until 8.30 p.m. Uh, as we do have that uh, radar indicated rotation. Let's actually take another look uh, at that rotation here for you and, and see we did, how it looks. We did get a report from an emergency manager in the Cascade area of thunderstorm wind gust of around 55 miles per hour. So again, um, although we haven't seen any rotation at the surface at this point from any spotters, this is producing some really high wind gusts associated with this. And you can notice that right here on this velocity. See how bright those green colors are? That's some really high winds pushing through the Cascade area right now. So something to keep in mind with the system as well. So we've exactly. got Exactly. We've gotten measured reports of 55. I know earlier on radar was indicating around 45 to 55. Yeah, and I was just I was just looking at that right now. Um, it looks like radar is indicating about 55 to 60 mile power winds with that at this time. Looks like we might have just gotten a there. continuance of the okay. Benton, Buchanan, and Lynn County. Warning. Okay, sounds good. So um, let's zoom back out here and we'll show you again uh, how everything looks across the board for us at this time as we've been uh, you know watching that tornado warning we want to make sure that other people know there are still other warnings in effect Benton Buchanan Lynn County that's the warning that was ju just continued for us here at this time now 60 mile per hour winds uh, and a uh, small hail possible with that storm as it continues to push to the south and east again that warning until 8 15 p.m. Uh, 60 mile per hour winds uh, in a line kind of uh, extending near Masonville, down near Garrison, moving to the east at 35 miles per hour. Um, we also have uh, the possibility actually of uh, some pretty heavy rainfall with this storm. Again, you can see those deep dark reds uh, and kind of that classic line moving through that's gonna bring some pretty heavy rainfall to that area. Obviously we need the rain, that's a good thing, but uh, we don't wanna be dealing with uh, the uh, severe weather and the possibility for flash flooding. So we still wanna make sure that everyone is aware of uh, that potential. Jasper, yeah. Powashik, and Tama counties, you also have a warning until um, 9 p.m. for 60 mile power winds and nickel sized hail. And again, that one could see some pretty uh, good, strong wind gusts as well, a tornado possible with that one as well. Yeah, and if you want to pull up max too, I pulled up the estimated rainfall as you were talking about that. And you can notice really from that Blackhawk County line across Highway 20 through Manchester and into portions of Dubuque County where that system has been pushing through some yellows, oranges, and reds there. That can indicate, you know, some really healthy rainfall from this system. So this estimating that we could have seen, you know, upwards of an inch of rainfall or so, we'll continue to kind of keep an eye. This is just estimated at this point. We'll have a better look at actual reports over the next couple of hours or so, but this is again bringing heavy rainfall to the area and with such dry ground with areas being in this severe drought that could cause a flooding potential a little bit quicker just because that ground can't absorb the moisture as fast as what it normally would if it had a little bit of moisture in it. So just something to kind of keep in mind with this heavy rainfall. And that's actually a great point, uh, you know, talking about reports how we don't have those yet. If you do have a weather report, please uh, let us know of that. Um, we'd, we'd love to have uh, your reports, obviously only if it's safe. Um, but uh, here is actually a picture that we received from Harry Ulrich uh, near the Pella area. This is uh, where we were seeing some pretty good rotation and had a tornado warning a short time ago. Uh, still waiting for uh, confirmation on uh, if this was able to touch down or what exactly uh, was going on with this. But uh, a likely tornado near the Pella area a short time ago. So again, these storms are capable of producing tornadoes. So that's why we want to make sure that those uh, involved in that tornado warning right now are taking it seriously. Dubuque, Jackson, Jones County uh, now moving uh, past the Cascade area uh, for us here. Let's check out that velocity and see where the strongest winds are at this time. So right now it looks like the uh, highest winds are again, those really bright kind of greens, almost to that white color of green. That's where we're seeing the strongest and uh, highest winds at this time. Now to the south and to the uh, east of the Cascade area and continuing to push to the east for us about 25 miles per hour, I think is how fast this storm is moving at last check for us here. Um, as we, let's see if we, uh, switch back over to radar and we'll add on those uh, tracks for you here. There we are. All right, so again, moving now towards the Otter Creek area. 
and continuing to push uh, to the south and east. Looking like we're having some trouble with our tracker there. Let's try this one more time. There we go. So headed towards uh, Otter Creek here within the next few minutes um, and then uh, off towards the Iron Hills area shortly after the 820. Andrew at uh, 834 Springbrook, 842 Huntsville, 847 Maquoketa by uh, shortly before the 9 o'clock hour. So again, continuing to keep those storms pushing to the east for us here at this time. Dubuque, Jackson, Jones County still under that tornado warning until 830 p.m. So another 20 minutes left on that tornado warning. We haven't to seen any uh, further reports other than that 55 mile per hour wind gust in the Cascade area. But again, we have been seeing some pretty strong winds. If we maybe want to go check out some of our city cams on Max 2 with Kaylee again, um, we can go see uh, exactly what we're dealing with there. Yeah, so this is a look at our McGrath City Cam in Vinton, and this is associated with that severe thunderstorm warned system. So you can see those darker clouds, the low level clouds there, as well as some heavy rain. We've gotten some questions on our Facebook page on why people in Lynn County are getting an alert to their phone. That is because a portion of Lynn County is under a severe thunderstorm warning. This does not include Cedar Rapids proper, um, but it does include the far northwestern corner of Lynn County. So reason why you may be getting those alerts, there may be, you know, thunderstorm uh, sirens going off or things like that. All it right, we did just get a report of a tornado now reported near the uh, Dubuque and Jackson County line. That is from uh, the emergency manager manager in uh, Dubuque County. So again, we're going to highlight that uh, tornado warning. Dubuque, Jackson, Jones County. Now is the time to be in your safe place. Uh, this uh, storm again has now had a reported tornado near the Dubuque and Jackson County lines. Um, let's pull up the latest information here. It's just coming in for us. Looking like about 811, a confirmed tornado located over the Bernard area. If you're in Bernard, get to your lowest level, get to your most interior uh, room if, of a sturdy structure. Now is the time to take action. Don't wait until you have visual confirmation of that tornado. At that point, it's too late. You want to get to your safe place now. That's why we're on here. That's why we're talking to you. Now is the time to get to that safe place. Again, um, in the, uh, the the Dubuque and Jackson County lines is about where we're looking at that 15 miles to the south of Dubuque and uh, moving to the east at about 35 miles per hour. Uh, we have the potential for some flying debris uh, if you're caught without shelter. Obviously, you don't want to be in a mobile home. You want to get to that storm shelter, that sturdy structure. Um, we're looking at this storm right now moving east at 35 miles per hour to the Zwingle area by about 820 to the Lamont and Fullerton areas by about 825. Again, Dubuque, Jackson, Jones County. If you are in that area, if you are near this area, get to your safe place now. Uh, why not get to your safe place and then check for that further information and make sure that uh, you don't need any uh, uh, additional stuff. Yeah, and we've got a track here, Washington Mills. It is happening in your area right now. If you're listening to us, you need to get to your safe place immediately. Lamont by around 833 as well as some other communities within the next 10 minutes. So keep this in mind. This is now a confirmed tornado situation. If you are under this tornado warning, you need to get in your safe place as quick as possible. And we're going to pull up these safety tips for tornado warnings. You want to get to the lowest level of your home, get under something sturdy. The lowest level of your home may be a basement, but if you do not have a basement, that's also okay. Think a small interior room, like a bathroom, a closet, a laundry room, something without windows, uh, getting away from the doors, getting away from the outside walls. A great thing to think about is put as many outside walls between you and uh, the inside as possible to protect yourself. Cover yourself with either have your bike helmet on, cover yourself with blankets, pillows, towels, get under something sturdy, get in a bathtub and cover yourself. Again, this is a confirmed firm tornado from this area, so you want to make sure you're getting to that safe place we, now. We do have reports of some damage in the area also from the emergency manager. So again, we will reiterate, now is the time to get to your safe place. Don't wait for that visual confirmation of that tornado. This is your confirmation. We are telling you that there is a tornado in Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties uh, near the Bernard area that continues uh, to move to the east at about 35 miles per hour. Again, a confirmed tornado on the ground that has been observed uh, by the emergency manager there in that area, continuing to push towards the Zwingle area by about uh, 820 here. So within the next five minutes, don't wait five minutes. Get to your safe place right now uh, as we have seen damage observed in the area. No, and I will 
say too, Otter Creek is in this tornado warning. The system, you know, the track may be more of a northerly turn right now, but you are still under that tornado warning. You want to get to your safe place before this potential of this system could make that different turn with uh, near the Otter Creek area as well. So keep that in mind. This is going to push near Andrew Springbrook as well as Bellevue and other portions of Jackson County very, very soon. So if you are located in Jackson County, although you're not under the warning, I would say get ready and get ready to get to that safe place as this continues to push to the east. Again, a, a confirmed tornado. We've got confirmed damage out of this area as well that was confirmed near the Bernard area. Most likely has now either pushing through that area right now or has passed that area and is continuing to push to the east towards Lamont. So keep that in mind over the next couple of minutes if you're in between those two communities. Exactly. So uh, again, we you know, can't drive this home enough. This is not just a tornado warning. This is a tornado on the ground. This has been observed. This has caused damage. So take cover now. Get to a basement. Get to that interior room on the lowest possible level. If you don't have a basement, stay on the first floor. Stay in the most interior room possible. If you have a basement, great. Get down there. Stay away from windows if at all possible. Cover your head. Uh, you know, if you have a bike helmet in the area, grab that. Uh, obviously, you don't want to take any extra time to go gather things. Uh, but if you have that with you, great. Uh, you know, use blankets, use towels to cover yourself. Um, if you're in a mobile home, you need to get into a sturdy shelter. Make sure uh, that you're in that sturdy shelter, the most uh, interior room possible of a sturdy structure. Again, we will reiterate that this uh, severe or this tornado warning in effect for Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties staying in effect here for another 13 minutes. And this is an observed tornado uh, that we have had uh, some damage reported as well in the area. Right now, we continue uh, to see those really strong winds. You can see those really bright uh, white and green colors. That's where we're looking at really uh, those uh, higher winds possible and uh, continuing to see this all staying in effect for us here uh, through the next few hours. Obviously, we are going to continue to track this uh, tornado warning right now. Again, the time to get to your safe place. But uh, as we wait for some further information on that, we're going to um, skip on over to Max 1 and we'll show you uh, a little bit of the other activity that's happening uh, in the area. It looks like we have uh, actually expired some of those warnings that we're building back behind this tornado warning, so that is some good news. There is still a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for Jasper and Powasheet counties. That one's staying in effect until 9 p.m. for 60 mile power winds and nickel sized hail for us here. Um, we also have a warning in far south and eastern Iowa, uh, Des Moines, Hancock, Henry, and uh, League counties there pushing to the east and moving, uh, or in a tornado possible tag actually on that warning as well. So again, some pretty hefty winds with a lot of these storms, and that's exactly how we expected these storms to evolve. The uh, hail threat was gonna be kind of an early thing, uh, turning more towards that wind threat here as the storms progress. Obviously, again, we're still dealing with that tornado warning though. And we want to make sure uh, if you are in this area that you are uh, taking shelter. If you're not already there, need to get there uh, really uh, pretty quick. So let's pause things here. Again, we'll pull up that velocity again. Um, anywhere that you're seeing these really bright, almost white greens, that's where we're looking at that uh, strongest wind as well. And we're also looking uh, at that little bit of a possible couplet kind of moving towards the Otter Creek area for us here. Um, again, this has been an observed tornado for us. We've had damage reports in the area as well. This continues to move to the east at about 35 miles per hour. This warning covering, um, let's see, uh, a confirmed tornado over the Bernard area at about 811. So obviously we're uh, moving past that now. So it continues to move to the east at about 35 miles per hour. Uh, so that's why we're highlighting the Otter Creek area here at this time. This warning now uh, in effect for us until 830. It looks like we've actually just added on a uh, severe thunderstorm warning out ahead of that. Um, we'll see if we can get the latest information on that for yeah, you. Yeah, while you get that, we did have another severe thunderstorm warning issued to our south. We want to pull up Max 2. This is for portions of Keokuk as well as Washington counties. This continues to push to the east. We've got the potential of large hail, wind gust upwards of 60 miles per hour, and they also have added the tornado possible tag on this as well. So here's a couple of communities that will be impacted by this within the next couple of minutes. Again, 820 right now, Grace Hill by 836, Washington by 
by 847, Ainsworth by around 905, Cotter by around 915 tonight. So if you are in Keokuk and Washington counties, you want to head to your safe place at this point as well. Again, we've got the potential of some high winds associated with this as well as some hail. Right now, not seeing anything with the potential of rotation at this moment, but again, we've got the potential of some high winds as well as rotation uh, with that. And then again, we've got that other severe thunderstorm warning that was issued just ahead of that uh, tornado warned storm. This now includes portions of Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties. Yeah, so that one, uh, South Central Joe Davies County, as well as Northwestern uh, Carroll County in Indiana, uh, Jackson County, um, looking like East Central Jones County and Northeastern Clinton counties here in Iowa. This one staying in effect for us until 9 p.m. A severe thunderstorm located over the Fullerton area, about eight miles to the north of Maquoketa, moving east at 45 miles per hour. 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible with this. And again, uh, we do have that uh, tornado possible here um, uh, with this, uh, obviously with that tornado warning uh, that was observed a short time ago. This looks to be moving through the Andrew area by about 8.30, Springbrook by about 8.35. So still continuing to track these storms here and uh, looking at that tornado warning staying in effect for us still for another nine minutes for Dubuque, Jackson, and Jones counties. Again, there was a tornado observed with this system by the emergency manager in the area. Uh, that tornado uh, near the Dubuque and Jackson County line at about 8.10, obviously, we're about 10 minutes past that now. So that system continues to move to the east about 35 miles per hour. Now uh, closer to the Otter Creek area. And uh, then you can kind of see uh, how things will play out as we head through. Let's head over to Max 1 and we'll put things in motion for you. Um, as we head through the next few hours, again, things will continue to die down, but we are still very much dealing with this severe threat for uh, the next uh, hour or two at least. So one more time, tornado warning still in effect for Dubuque. Jackson and Jones counties until 8.30 p.m. Uh, the storm continuing to move towards the uh, Otter Creek area. Uh, as we check out that velocity one more time, we can kind of see, again, just, just, just starting to actually kind of push out of uh, that tornado warned area. That's why they've issued that severe thunderstorm warning out ahead of that, again, with that 70 mile power wind possibility uh, there. Certainly we uh, are still waiting for a little bit more confirmation on anything happening in that area uh, from any of our spotters, but uh, not getting any further information for us here at this time. Looks like a report in Jackson County of power lines down um, and also some damage to buildings at about uh, 810. So again, that's when we got that report of that observed tornado uh, and power lines down as well as some damage to uh, buildings in uh, the Jackson County area. So that is certainly why we are still continuing to highlight this. Looking like we're kind of condensing that tornado warning a little bit for us now, just part of Dubuque and Jackson counties, but still staying in effect for us uh, until 8.30 p.m. So that tornado warning, again, still in effect for, uh, uh, it has been canceled now for northeastern Jones County, uh, but that tornadic threat still remains for the rest of the area. Uh, looking like we're going to continue to keep uh, that uh, watch in effect until 11 p.m. as well. Um, let's see if we got... All right, so confirmed tornado located over the Zwingle area, about 15 miles south of Dubuque, continuing to move east at 30 miles per hour for us here. And continuing uh, that warning until about 8.30 in the evening. Just checking to see we continue to get further updates. Again, Jones County no longer included in this tornado warning just for Dubuque and Jackson counties now. Uh, and then we also have that new severe thunderstorm warning issued just to the south of that. We'll see if we can get that to populate here. Uh, Carroll, Clinton, uh, Jackson, Joe Davies counties, uh, quite a few uh, counties actually included in this. Um, Clinton, Jackson, and Jones counties in Iowa for us. Joe Davies there in Illinois until 9 p.m. That one for 70 mile per hour winds, uh, as well as the uh, potential for some smaller hail possible. 
We'll zoom out here, show you one more time. We Again, that's not all we're dealing with. We also have another wash, uh, warning down near the Washington area. Uh, this covers Keokuk and Washington counties, 60 mile per hour winds, one inch hail, and there is a possibility uh, of a tornado with that one as well. We've uh, seen a little bit of rotation on that one. We'll add that velocity on for you here and show you uh, looking like or we might be right in between stuff. So we're not getting really mm -hmm. great velocity readings for us, unfortunately, at this point. Uh, but again, there is a reason, obviously, that that tornado uh, possible tag is on there. So if you're in this area, if you're in the Washington area, this storm uh, moving right towards you here within the next couple of minutes, uh, certainly uh, a great idea. Get to your safe place uh, and then uh, we will continue to keep you updated here as we head uh, through the evening hours. Also a warning down near the Burlington area um, as well. Yeah, and I do want to take up Max 2 right now. Although this is not a severe thunderstorm warned storm, this is a look from our Grass City Cam in Hiawatha of that system approaching into Lynn County at this point. So I do want to give a look here to these viewers. This is that storm that's rolling into Lynn County right now. It is not under any sort of warning, but I know that viewers are watching from Lynn County at this point and probably watching some of these dark clouds roll through and getting a little nervous at this point. So I just want to give you a look outside of what's kind of moving into the area. We could still have some high winds associated associated with this. We could still have some heavy rain, frequent lightning, thunder, and things like this, although it is not under any sort of warning. So just keep that in mind if you're in the Lynn County area, Center Point, Central City, getting some heavy rainfall. It'll most likely be pushing into Hiawatha as well as Cedar Rapids, Marion, very, very soon. So just keep that in mind for our viewers listening from Lynn County. If we head back over uh, to Max 1, we'll show you the timing here on that system that Kaylee was just talking about to the Robbins area here in just a couple minutes. It's shortly after the 8.30 hour, Hiawatha by about 8.40, um, Ellis Harbor there 8.45, Cedar Rapids by around uh, 8.50, as well as the Marion area, Fairfax 8.56, Springville 8.57, uh, Fairview there shortly after the 9 o'clock hour, uh, Eastern Iowa Airport down towards the Ely area there by about 9.12. So Again, continuing to track these storms. This not severe warn for us. Uh, just want to make sure that our uh, viewers in the Cedar Rapids area know uh, what uh, maybe you're looking outside, looking at those dark clouds. You know exactly what is coming your way. What we do have severe warned right now, that is that tornado warning for Dubuque and Jackson counties still in effect for us here for another couple of minutes. Again, that one's staying in effect until 8.30 p.m. here. Uh, so again, three more minutes left on that warning. Uh, and we also have a severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of that uh, that is also in effect uh, until 9 p.m. 70 mile power winds possible with that. Looking like we may have just had, yep, we uh, just had a a uh, new tornado warning issued. So For let's go Jackson check that out. County. Jackson County. And again, this is an observed tornado. We had uh, that observation from the emergency manor manager in the area here a short time ago. So a confirmed tornado in Jackson County. Get to your safe place if you are in this area. Uh, let's zoom in. Lamont uh, area off towards the, the Bellevue area as well. Uh, you guys need to get to your safe places right now. Obviously, if you are listening to us, don't wait. This is this is your warning to get to your safe place and get um, to where you need to be that lowest level, that most interior room possible. About 827, a confirmed tornado located over the Lamont area, 12 miles to the southwest of uh, Galena, moving east at 35 miles per hour. Uh, towards the Bellevue area by about 8.45 p.m. here tonight. Um, we also do have another tornado warning that is issued towards the south. So that was associated with that storm now pushing through portions of Washington County at this point. Now, I'm it, like Jan was talking about earlier, this is in between two radar sites. So it is not the best look at this. But if you zoom in really closely here, you can see um, here just... Um, across the county line here into Keokuk and Washington counties that we see some starting to see some bright greens here. So this is the potential of a tornado with this system as well. Right now it's radar indicated, so nothing reported from this. But again, this continues to push to the east as well, including portions of Keokuk and Washington counties already within that severe thunderstorm warning. Reason why we've been saying all evening long, no matter what warning you're on, you have to get to that safe place um, associated with this. So I'm going to put a track on this system that 
that's now um, right there on the border of Keokuk and Washington counties, pushing to the east within this system. Grace Hill, 844, we talked about to you earlier. Make sure you're getting to that safe place immediately. Hayes Timber by around 857, Washington at around 9 o'clock tonight. This tornado warning goes until 9, so it could reach the Washington area uh, within the next half an hour or so. Do not wait to get to that safe place until you get to 9 o'clock. Washington, you are going to want to get into that safe place now uh, while you are under that tornado warning. Again, that safe place is your lowest level. That could mean a basement. That could mean uh, your first floor of your home. And this is a look at uh, Doppler radar with this. And you notice some of those purples. That could be indicating some heavy rain associated with this as well. We could also have the potential of just gusty winds that maybe aren't necessarily rotating with this. So keep that in mind. Heavy rain is going to move into the Washington area very, very soon. And again, that rotation is sitting there right along that Keokuk, Washington uh, County border at this point. So keep that in mind if you're in Keokuk and Washington counties. So a quick uh, review on that warning here that we're looking at East Central Keokuk County, Southwestern Washington County uh, staying in effect until 9 p.m. for that um, tornado warning. Again, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near the Harper area, about 12 miles east of Sigourney, moving to the east at 30 miles per hour. Uh, threats with this would be a possible tornado as well as quarter sized hail uh, moving towards the Washington area here, uh, that front edge of rain probably just now reaching Washington uh, where we would be looking at that strongest wind still off to the west but again now is your time to get to your safe place and get where you need to be this is your uh, advanced warning on that one if we want to switch over uh, to Max One, we'll show you exactly uh, the other warning that we've been tracking here. Again, Jackson County also under a tornado warning. This one an observed tornado uh, and that warning staying in effect until 9 p.m. We had that tornado over the Lama area about 12 miles to the southwest of, uh, of Galena. Um, and continuing to move to the east about 30 miles per hour, or 35 miles per hour now it looks like. I do want to pull up our Sigourney camera here real fast with that other tornado warning down towards Washington because we've got a really great look at our city cam from this. Um, so you can notice the rain, but what you're going to really want to notice is those clouds out into the distance and notice the towering cumulus clouds with it. That is most likely that tornado warned storm at this point. Um, so we're going to try to see if we can zoom out maybe just a little bit on this Sigourney city cam so you can get a better idea of the height of this storm but that is most likely that tornado worn storm at this point so you notice how you've got that layer of lower clouds and then it gets really tall so that's that area that um, I think we're really concerned with with this southern tornado warning that we have for portions of Keokuk as well as Washington counties that goes until nine o'clock again it's right there on the border of Keokuk and Washington County so if you're on that border there uh, you'll want to make sure you're getting in that safe place if you're not there already. So if we rotate here just a little bit, again, you notice some of that lightning within there. This is that tornado worn storm, a look on our Mogracity Cam in Sigourney so far uh, this evening. So um, if you're in those areas, you live in Washington County, maybe not necessarily Washington, the city, you want to get to that safe place as quick as possible. This is radar indicated at this point, um, but we have seen these storms being capable of producing tornadoes at this point. So that's something to keep in mind um, as we head throughout the rest of this evening. And not only that, high winds are possible, hail is possible, and as well as some heavy rainfalls, you're noticing some of those dark purple starting to pop up with this Washington storm. So the velocity with this, again, it's not very clear because we're in between both of those radar sites, uh, but I would believe it would be somewhere here right along the border of Keokuk and Washington counties and is continuing to push to the east. So this is the area that we're looking at right here is continuing to push off to the east, will impact Washington. Washington within the next half an hour. And again, that is when that warning is set to expire at nine o'clock tonight. It looks like we might have a potential wall cloud on that uh, Washington uh, storm as well. So again, uh, that wall cloud, that's where we would get that funnel cloud or that tornado from. So we wanna make sure that uh, again, if you are in this area, if you're in the Washington area or anywhere near this warning, now is the time to get to your safe place. Um, I'm checking out the Washington city cam here, unfortunately not seeing uh, anything really uh, that is great for us uh, to show, I don't think, right now. Um, so 
yeah, our, our, our visuals for this a, a little a little tricky, but I think what we saw from that Sigourney City Cam uh, kind of uh, really showing us a little bit better. There we are, yeah. Uh, you can see again, like the the height of that storm and the strength of that storm. Uh, unfortunately, the Washington City Cam is almost too close to the action, so we've got too many trees in the way for us here. I think at this time. Yeah, and that storm continues to push off to the east, so you can see the frequent lightning within this uh, view on our city cam here. Uh, but I do want to put another track on this because, again, a tornado warning issued just a couple of minutes ago here in the Keokuk and Washington area as this storm continues to push off to the east. So we'll pull up velocity here and we'll put the track off of that because that's where we could see the potential rotation um, within this as most likely just cross the border here. Uh, Washington uh, within the next you know, 20 minutes or so, 856 um, Westchester by around 842, Hayes Timber by around 853, Ainsworth by around 914 if this continues to push to the east. So if you're in these communities, if you live in Washington County, you want to get to that safe place now as you're listening to us. You don't want to wait um, any longer. You're under that tornado warning and you're also under a continuous severe thunderstorm warning as well. So you want to make sure you're getting to that safe place as quick as possible. Um, Zooming out, uh, the reason why we came on with our continuous coverage just earlier on this evening was due to this tornado warned storm that was in portions of Dubuque County. Now uh, that warning just for Jackson County that goes until 9 p.m. But this was an observed tornado in that area. So that's something you want to keep in mind um, that this was observed. We have seen it uh, produce a tornado um, at as it's continued to push to the east. So this is kind of a look at where we could see those high winds associated with it. Just down to the south, a severe thunderstorm warning. Um, that is moving into the highest winds into Maquoketa as well as Andrew at this point. That includes portions of Jackson County as well and pushes into other counties as this will continue to push to the east and move into portions of Illinois as we continue throughout this evening. Um, so areas to the north and west are starting to get over of their severe weather threat at this point. Um, um, we are seeing some heavy rain now pushing into portions of Lynn County, although those storms aren't warned at this point. We could still see some pretty gusty winds associated with that. So if you are watching us in the Lynn County area, um, I did want to pull up our Marion City Cam as it had a really good look um, earlier of those storms rolling through. So you can see not as much dark clouds there, but we did see some heavy rainfall push through that area. Um, a little bit of lightning there. We'll also pull up our Cedar Rapids City Cam and give you a look as it's continuing to move on the north side of the city at this point as well. Um, if we can get that to load possibly, maybe not. Um, doesn't look like we are able to pull up our Cedar Rapids City Cam at this point. Uh, but I do want to give that update for those in Lynn County, maybe seeing some heavy rain, some dark clouds moving through the area. Uh, we saw some of those on our city cams earlier, uh, so just keep that in mind. But active warnings are that tornado warning in Jackson County. That severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of that. And then the other uh, discrete cell here that's pushing through portions of Washington County where we have a severe thunderstorm warning and then a tornado warning within that. Um, let's go back up uh, on Max 1 to that uh, Jackson County one. Again, this is an observed tornado and this one staying in effect until 9 p.m. for us here. Uh, we do actually have uh, some reports of the damage in the area, uh, cattle shed and grain bins, as well as power lines that um, went down some other farm buildings and stuff like that. So again, uh, dealing with very high winds as well as uh, that uh, tornadic possibility. Um, Oh, with that storm, that one's staying in effect until 9 p.m. And then we also have that one over Washington County uh, for radar indicated rotation staying in effect until uh, 9 p.m. I do wanna just uh, move down here real quick. This is mostly out of our area, but I know we do still have a few viewers uh, down towards this area. So I wanna make sure that you know there's also a tornado warning that's just been issued uh, for the Des Moines and Lee County areas uh, in Iowa. And uh, that one uh, also is a radar indicated rotation, ping pong ball size tail and a tornado with that one. Again, we'll tr focus a little bit more on uh, the ones here uh, across the bulk of our area. Further to the north, Jackson County, 9 p.m. is when that one is set to expire, but that uh, was an observed tornado at one point. Looks like we've uh, downgraded that now uh, to radar indicated rotation. So I'm guessing that uh, any observation of that has uh, now lifted, but we do have, um, this, I think, some big hail possible 
with this uh, severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of it. Um, maybe, oh, that's the, let's, let's go off to the Washington one. That's the one that has the bigger hail potential. So that one looking like uh, maybe up to inch and a half or half dollar sized hail with that Washington County one. Um, and again, moving right into the Washington area here at this time. So uh, as we have that tornado warning in place, make sure you're in your safe place, make sure you're in that lowest level, uh, that most interior room possible with that one. Again, moving into Washington here, uh, over Washington really as we speak. And then that other uh, kind of cluster uh, of warnings that we have to the north of the Macopita area here in Jackson County, that is where that uh, tornado warning remains in effect for us, as well uh, as that severe thunderstorm warning just to the south of it, that uh, seeing the possibility of 70 mile per hour winds. I do wanna pull up here that severe thunderstorm watch one more time. Just remind everyone that we do still have that potential for some strong storms through the 10 or 11 o'clock hour here this evening, but we have started to take a couple counties out. So off to the north and to the west of Waterloo, uh, counties starting to be removed, but most of the rest of the TV9 viewing area still under that severe thunderstorm watch through the nine o'clock hour for our northern counties through the 11 o'clock hour uh, for our more southern counties here. Yeah, and I will say as we continue through the evening, more and more counties to the north and west will most likely get expired out of that watch. Um, but for right now, um, still under that. So just making sure you're staying weather aware over the next couple of hours or so. Um, we're getting in some photos here that we're going to try to import in, but some storms rolling into Fairfax, Shellsburg, um, as well as some Mamatis clouds coming out of, let's see here... This is up near the, just south of Prairie du Chien, so up near Dubuque County, um, which isn't surprising if that was a tornado worn storm. Also, we're getting some pictures in from Palo of a shelf cloud pushing through that area. Um, so we're gonna try to get some of these photos imported in so you can be able to see some of those. Um, but just wanna thank all of our viewers for sending in these photos. We appreciate them, but we also do wanna remind you, only take photos when it's safe to do so. If you're under these warnings, you need to be inside, you need to be in your safe place, do not make it a priority to take photos, although we appreciate the reports. We want to make sure all the most important thing is keeping you and your family safe with these uh, storm systems. So uh, we're going to work on getting some of these photos um, into the area um, and be able to show you a couple of those as well. Also through the Benton area earlier, we actually caught that on our city cam um, as well. So we've been keeping a close eye on our city cam network as these storms have been rolling through the area as well. Uh, talking about those photos, here's one of those pictures that we had from earlier. Uh, again, these storms have had a history of producing tornadoes. So this uh, was actually near the Pella area, sent in by Harry Ulrich a short time ago. Remember, it's super, super easy. If you, uh, if it is safe to take those pictures and to send us those, uh, you can send those in very easily from the KCRG weather app. Uh, again, this is uh, that likely tornado near the Pella area a short time ago. So those storms continue to uh, be able to produce um, um, those very strong winds as well as the potential for some tornadic activity across the area. We'll highlight one more time here uh, where exactly those warnings are for us. Again, uh, to the north there, Jackson County, that tornado warning still in effect until 9 p.m. Uh, at this time, radar indicated rotation now, so it looks like this one this one did have a uh, tornado on it uh, a short time ago, but uh, has now been uh, downgraded just to that radar indicated rotation. Still certainly something to take seriously, though, uh, as, again, it has had a history of producing a tornado. Let's add on that velocity for you here. Uh, we'll take a look at that ourselves and see exactly how everything looks. Um, so yeah, not seeing a, a super tight couple with that one uh, at all um, anymore, but still obviously that warning is in effect until 9 p.m. There's a reason that we're leaving that uh, in effect as we head just to the south there. You can see some stronger winds in parts of uh, just to the north of the Makokota area. Um, and so that is certainly where we might be uh, seeing maybe uh, some higher wind damage and also kind of seeing that uh, brighter green there just to the south and to the west of the Bellevue area as well. So those warnings continue uh, again to the north. We also have uh, that cluster of warnings there in the Washington area for Washington County here at this time, also in effect uh, until 9 p.m. is that tornado warning for uh, radar indicated rotation as well as one inch hail. Uh, again, now moving through uh, the Washington area here 
at this time. We do want to remind you, uh, obviously, that there are many ways that you can uh, uh, be keeping up to date here. Obviously, we're here on air, but you can also uh, uh, send us things on uh, Facebook and Twitter as well um, as uh, checking KCRG.com. You can also tune into our radio partners uh, if you need to at all, um, if you're headed out and about and no longer able to watch us here online. Uh, I also want to mention, again, only if it's safe. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, you're sending us the information. That's how we are able uh, to give out that information and let people know uh, you know, what exactly people are seeing with these storms. So uh, if you have hail or uh, if you have wind damage, we want to know about it. Um, you can easily uh, send pictures in only if it's safe um, to the KCRG First Alert weather app. You can also uh, email us those uh, to weather at kcrg.com. We'd love to have those. But again, Again, we only want those uh, if it's safe for you to do so. Let's uh, see, we seem to be getting a lot of updates. Um, okay, it looks like we have expired the warning in far southeast Iowa, the uh, severe thunderstorm warning, but otherwise looking like most of the rest of the activities still holding together for us here um, at this time. So continuing to keep those warnings in effect uh, again until 9 p.m. That tornado warning for Jackson County there uh, to the north um, for now radar indicated rotation just to the south of that. We have that severe thunderstorm warning uh, in effect for 60 mile per hour winds also until 9 p.m. And then we also have those warnings there in Washington County, again, until 9 p.m. Uh, for that uh, radar indicated rotation at this time. And then also that severe thunderstorm warning um, uh, for the ping pong ball sized hail and 60 mile per hour winds uh, with that, obviously, still that tornado warning within that though. Uh, and that brings us that uh, stronger wind chance. Again, it's kind of hard to uh, look at the velocity on that one just because of where it is between our radar sites, unfortunately. Um, so can't get really, really uh, clear readings on that, uh, but we continue to watch that storm. We'll zoom out, take a wider view of everything here for you uh, and show you, again, all of eastern Iowa uh, has been seeing that rain here through the evening hours as that cold front continues to push through. But for the most part, uh, kind of in a line from uh, just back behind Dubuque uh, down towards the Cedar Rapids area and to the south is where things are. If you're to the west of that at this point, uh, rain threat for the most part pretty well done. It does look like we're seeing a little bit of activity uh, building in there just to the north of the Decorah area there. Um, into Winnesheek and Alma Key counties at this time. So maybe a little bit more rain coming through for some folks, but the, the bulk of this precipitation, the uh, bulk of these storms firing along that cold front and that continues again in that line through the Dubuque and down towards Cedar Rapids areas uh, and then further off to the south towards uh, Lomoni even. Let's see, it looks like we might have um, a stronger line of thunderstorms um, coming through now. Um, in, let's see, Cedar, Johnson, Benton, Jones, and Lynn counties. Um, not severe worn for us here at this time, but continuing to move to the south and east around 25 miles per hour. We could see about 40 mile per hour winds, uh, as well as pretty heavy rainfall with these. So. Again, that's that line that we've been talking about that continues to push uh, into the Cedar Rapids area here now uh, at this time, really just now uh, moving into our area. And we continue uh, to keep that around. I'm going to try to pull up a few city cams for us here uh, and we'll see if we can see any of that activity at this time. <clears throat> Looking like, let's see, this one's trying to load in for us here. I don't think it wants to load in though at this time. So uh, we'll go take a look at another one of our city cams. <laughs> yeah, and we're working on getting some uh, viewer photos in this right now uh, that we've gotten submitted into us. So I'll have those in in just a couple of minutes. Um, so we are working on getting some of your photos in here. So again, we appreciate you sending those to us. Yeah, so we have uh, obviously uh, quite a bit of rain coming down in the Marion area at this time. And we continue to uh, see those storms moving into the area, uh, looking like 
uh, that shelf cloud um, from those storms. Again, that shelf cloud is the leading edge of those storms. That is not a wall cloud, which is what you would be seeing uh, if there's tornadic activity. But that shelf cloud is moving uh, into uh, the area here at this time. Uh, I uh, just received a photo from the Ely area that shows that shelf cloud pushing in. So um, if you're seeing maybe a, a big long line of clouds that's moving into your area, that's probably that shelf cloud if you're uh, in the, in this line here that we've been tracking uh, from down towards uh, Monticello through Anamosa to Cedar Rapids and down towards Williamsburg. Uh, that's exactly what we are watching here. And again, uh, we're dealing with 40 mile per hour winds, maybe some small hail, but pretty heavy rainfall coming with this system here that's moving through the area, but no severe thunderstorm warnings on that for us at this time. Where we do have severe thunderstorm warnings down towards the Washington area, and that also has a tornado warning with it. Again, radar indicated rotation with that staying in effect for another 10 minutes here until nine o'clock. We also have that severe thunderstorm warning and a tornado warning further off to the north there. Jackson County is where that tornado warning is. Uh, that one was an observed tornado here a uh, bit ago. Looks like um, we uh, haven't seen any further uh, observations from that. So uh, that is certainly good news, but still that warning stays in effect for another 10 minutes for us at this time. It looks uh, and like they do plan to expire it. Okay, good. That's good news. It looks like they've uh, also expired that Washington County one here uh, just now. So uh, we will continue, um, obviously, to stay with you here until th those are allowed to drop off. But um, looking like we are going to see that activity uh, coming to an end here. Uh, at least a little bit. Yeah, and I do, I did get some of these viewer photos popped up. So if we want to hop over to Max 2 here, uh, we've got a couple of viewer photos in here. So this one was of a possible uh, tornado here on Max 2. This was near the Key West area. We appreciate Zach for sending in this photo. There it is there of a possible tornado near the Key West area. Um, so we've gotten that photo in from Zach. We also got this video or picture, excuse me, of a shelf cloud in the Vinton area. We want to thank Scott for sending us this photo of this shelf cloud. Um, we also got a picture of some Mamadis clouds, which are a pretty rare cloud type to see. You most likely see them during severe weather events like this due to sinking air, and they kind of look like cow udders um, and sinking air and things like that. So this one was near the Bagley area up into our northeast zone. This was from Stella, and then we also got another picture of a shelf cloud, this one from Amber in the Palo area. We've gotten a couple more from the Cedar Rapids area, so I'm going to continue Continue to work on trying to get some of your viewer photos into our system at this point. Um, but a lot of people noticing the shelf cloud on the front end of that of uh, those storms rolling through portions of Lynn County at this point. Again, they are not under any severe thunderstorm warnings, but we could still have some gusty winds, heavy rainfall, and things like that. We also did get a report from the Manchester area earlier on. If you were with our coverage then, we showed you some pretty yellow, red, orange areas of estimated rainfall. We got a report that they received one point eight seven inches at their house in Manchester over a short period of time. So some much needed rainfall um, in that area from that. We also do have one more viewer photo. This one was from earlier from that first tornado warning that was issued near the Pella area. This is of a possible tornado from Harry as well. So this is a complex of thunderstorms that we've been tracking throughout the evening hours so far today uh, with this first thunder or tornado warning issued near the Pella area. Also one up near Dubuque County as well as the tornado warning that was issued in the Washington County area. All right, so looking right now, like we just got a report in, for, uh, yeah, from Washington County of about pea-sized hail. Um, I th we do think these tornado warnings, though, will be uh, allowed to expire as we head towards that nine o'clock hour. Um, and so again, we'll do a quick update on everything that we've got going on here. That Washington County warning, uh, again, for radar indicated rotation, quarter sized hail, that's staying in effect through 9 p.m. for us here. Off to the north, that tornado warning for Jackson County, now radar indicated rotation, but it had produced a tornado here a short time ago. Um, and we do have actually a crew on the way up there uh, to uh, get reports uh, of that damage for us here. So you'll certainly want to uh, check back in for the KCRG TV9 news uh, at 10 o'clock that we have coming up here this evening. Uh, and we'll uh, have all the latest on everything happening uh, up there in uh, the uh, Otter Creek, uh, Bellevue area, as well as uh, the Bernard areas and Cascade, where we did have, again, that activity moving through a uh, while ago. Looking like we just got a new severe thunderstorm warning issued. 
um, moving off again further to the east now for us and that Jackson County warning, uh, tornado warning will be allowed to expire. So as activity continues to drift out of our area, uh, certainly we are still seeing that uh, uh, stay, staying sustained 60 mile per hour winds uh, as well as that small hail, but um, moving off uh, into still Joe Davies County as well as uh, Clinton and Jackson counties uh, in Iowa. Part of that warning now through 10 o'clock, this new warning um, continuing to drift off out of the area. Um, again, we do have a fair uh, bit of activity rolling through uh, that line in the Cedar Rapids area now moving through um, and continuing to give uh, some pretty heavy rainfall, some pretty frequent lightning with this. In fact, uh, we'll add on the lightning layer here. Um, we did just hear some thunder I, just outside I did of our too. studio. <laughs> I heard that as well. So yeah, we've definitely got that, that thunder going, that lightning going here. You can see all those little lightning bolts uh, showing just how much lightning is really uh, coming with this system as it moves through the area. Um, so I'm sure we're seeing uh, quite a bit of lightning out there uh, at this time. Um, let's check out again another uh, few of our city cams. So Mount Vernon area looking like uh, some storm clouds, rain not quite there at this time, uh, but again continuing to push towards that area. Uh, we've seen that obviously again in uh, the Marion and Hiawatha uh, and Cedar Rapids areas. You can see obviously that rain coming down, those raindrops still on the city cam at this time. Um, and as we look uh, at the Iowa City area here, looking like, again, uh, not raining here just yet, but those storm clouds continuing to move into the area. So one qu more quick look uh, at the uh, entire wide radar picture. Again, we're going to stay on here through that uh, 9 o'clock time frame. That's when we're expecting those tornado warnings to expire, uh, and that's when we'll be able to send you back to uh, programming. But for right now, we'll still keep highlighting uh, everything that we have going on across the area. Area. Those warnings continue uh, for us um, as we head through the next uh, couple of minutes for Washington County. Uh, that is for a, a radar indicated rotation as well as quarter sized hail uh, now moving just past the Washington area. So for the most part that storm is to the east of Washington at this time. We also have uh, those warnings up in, in near the Maquoketa area. So that Jackson County tornado warning should be expiring here in about four minutes. Uh, but we do have those severe thunderstorm warnings just to the south and to the east of it. Uh, obviously, as we continue to see that potential for some strong wind with this system as we turn on that uh, velocity layer for you here. Again, we're not looking at any super tight rotation for us right now, but we do have those brighter colors um, at this time. And so we will continue uh, to see those stronger winds, 60 to 70 mile per hour winds still possible. And then we do want to give you an update on our watches here if we want to pull up max two um, that a couple more counties have been canceled out of this watch. So currently uh, Bremer, Blackhawk, Grundy, Butler, as well as Tama and Powashik counties are now no longer under a severe thunderstorm watch at this point. But all areas highlighted in pink, so this does include our northern counties, our northeast zone through Lynn and Johnson counties down into Washington counties and further into the southeast, now been extended into portions of Illinois are under that severe thunderstorm watch. Most areas this does continue until 11 o'clock tonight. So we are going to be keeping a close eye on as this cold front continues to push through. That's what's been the driving factor of a lot of these thunderstorms that have been produced across our area so far today. Again, just as a quick recap, we did have that tornado warned storm that pushed near the Pella area and has continued to push westward um, or eastward, excuse me, over the past couple of hours or so. So reason and why we've continued our programming and continue to be with you throughout this entire evening. Right now, the warnings that are um, for tornado warnings for Washington County are set to expire at nine o'clock. Those continue to push to the east. We still do have the potential though of some gusty winds, some hail associated with that. So that severe thunderstorm warning also still in effect for portions of Washington County. Um, now that 
tornado warning for Jackson County also set to expire in a couple of minutes at 9 o'clock tonight. And then again, those severe thunderstorm warnings continue to go eastward into portions of Jackson County as well into portions of Illinois. So this is a wide look across eastern Iowa so far this evening where you can see those storms continuing to push to the south and east. And I think for the most part, you know, once this line starts to get through your area, your severe weather threat's going to diminish quite a bit for this evening. Yeah, that's exactly right. So as you can see, that line kind of uh, now from the Dubuque area through Cedar Rapids and uh, down towards Ottumwa. Uh, if you're off to the north and west of that line, for the most part, that threat uh, is coming to an end. I think we'll continue to see those watches uh, kind of getting expired from that. Let's go hit up that watch one more time for you here. Remind you uh, that this activity will be still sticking around in the area till about 10 or 11 o'clock here tonight. Uh, but overall, uh, it looks like we already have seen some of that actually getting expired. So that's uh, certainly good news for us here. Uh, uh, but we will still obviously uh, keep it uh, here on TV9. We'll keep you updated with everything as we head through the next few hours. But for now, we're going to send you back to your regularly scheduled programming. Severe weather on KCRG TV9, sponsored by AmeriClean.